how do we connect mounting holes because i remember uh, many people <laughs> ask me these questions for example when i'm designing uh, boards for like uh, computers very often you see all mounting holes that are grounded and then uh, i remember times when i was designing stacked boards on top of each other and people were asking okay how to ground these shall all the mounting holes be connected to ground or only one of them or none of them so what mm. are the answers here well <clears throat> it, it's all about resonances once again you with me and people get all sorts of weird and wonderful behavior um because their their product is emitting noise at certain frequencies so they'll mess around and they'll get some uh, structure which doesn't happen to resonate at those frequencies. Then they'll do another similar product which has got different not frequencies in it and they'll find that their original structure is now no good and they've got to mess around again. You see, The trick is to make sure that your radio frequency bonding is closer than a tenth of the wavelength at the highest frequency that you care about. So, for example, if you have a board and you have the metal uh, housing, then the board should be extremely close to the bottom of the housing? That's what you mean? Well, it, it, is, it is better the closer they are. Certainly they should be closer than a tenth of the wavelength themselves at the highest frequency of concern. But the spacing between the bonding points should also be okay. closer than a tenth of the wavelength. And it gets very interesting. I mean, obviously, if you're trying to... Um, because you've got lots of cavities formed within the board structures, you know, especially when you start putting mounting pillars in. Can, can we just find the picture so people mm. know what we are talking about? Here's an example of stacked uh, stacked boards. There's a <clears throat> part of a metal chassis. We've mm -hmm. got the lid off, of course. Then there's a, a bottom board and, a, and, and cavities between the metal chassis and the bottom board. Then there's a second board and then there's a, a heat sink and there's cavities underneath all those things. When you say cavities, what does it mean? How I just mean a volumetric space. Well, imagine cavities. Sorry? It's just, a it's just a volumetric space. Okay. The volume. You know, I mean, we call them cavities. Uh, and you think of a cavity like in a, a piece of stone, you think of it as like a, like a depression in the stone or something, you know, but uh, these are just spaces. We could call them spaces, rather than cavities. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it, and see, that's it problem. From... If there is space, that's problem. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if there's physical dimension, there's all physical dimensions resonate, and you've got one-dimensional resonances, which is why we why we match transmission lines. That's a one-dimensional resonance structure, and you've got two-dimensional resonances, which is like a printed circuit board plane. So it me? means it can resonate in different places mm. on the PCB. Yeah. Well, like that, that simulation that we just saw, yeah. we saw two-dimensional resonances. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the, the metal wasn't moving. It's just that its voltage was, was fluctuating. Mm -hmm. you see? Now here we've got three-dimensional resonances in, in between uh, metal structures um, in three dimensions. And these are called cavities. And we call them cavities basically because of the uh, radars and magnetrons that were developed during the Second World War, they started off using what they called cavity resonators. You know, and they just basically hollowed out a block of metal at the right size and, and generated um, microwaves with it and used it for their radars. Mm -hmm. and, that, and, that, and that's how our and klystrons are something similar, I think, but the original magnetrons were cavity resonators, I think. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not very clear, but that's why we call them cavities because they, when they, when they, the thing was first discovered, they they used actual cavities in blocks of metal to generate microwaves. Well, here of course we've got these cavities and they're generating resonances that we don't want. Mm -hmm. You know, not like in your microwave cooker, but we do want them. But whenever you've got a cavity like this, you know, or a space between metal structures, you you've got a resonance. And the trick is to make the resonances higher than you care about. Now, 
Um, so the simple thing to do is to put in uh, good brass studs like this and, and make sure they're close enough together. And uh, I don't think they are close enough together on, on, this, on this structure here, but that wasn't the problem. But anyway, the, the idea is to put them closer together than a tenth of the wavelength mm -hmm. at the highest frequency that you want to control. Now, if, you, if you're fed up with putting in screw fixings, you can put in spring fingers instead. There may well be some spring fingers under here. And at higher frequencies, you, you end up running out of board space. You know, you've got no room for your components because you've got lots of just bonds, you see. So what you can do then is dampen down the cavity. So um, you can't stop it resonating, but you can at least reduce its Q, its quality factor. Mm -hmm so that you don't get a huge gain. How do you raise, how do you lower well, the cure? There are several ways of doing that. One is um, you can, instead of using metal to metal bonds like these here, you can use resistive bonds. Okay. So you can uh, have this metal pillar here connecting to a, a, a little resistor. Oh, that connects oh yeah. I think we have a picture of this. Yes, we do. And the other approach is to put in a, actually a sheet of um, RF absorber, radio frequency absorber. You buy them as sheet materials and they're, they're loaded with carbon and ferrite particles, usually some kind of elastomer. And usually they're self-adhesive on one side. So you can put a sheet of absorber, say, underneath this heat sink mm -hmm. and it'll just dampen down the resonances. Oh, I didn't know something like that exists. Well, there's, lot, there's lots of work going on with uh, absorbers now. Uh, right. With Now that people are working with 5G and 6G and all the rest of it, and very, very, very high frequencies, you know, um, higher than 6 gigahertz, um, you can do a lot of absorbing with quite a thin sheet of plastic with Im embedded um, uh, ferrites and, and embedded uh, mm, bits of metal, you know, copper or bits of carbon inside. There's, there's, there's all sorts of things you can you can do to absorb the RF in quite thin sheets of metal. If you want an absorber that works at 300 megahertz, it's usually going to be about two or three millimeters thick and quite expensive. But at, but at 300, at 30 gigahertz, it can be just like a piece mm -hmm. of silicon. Mm -hmm. and, and it's going um, to then uh, heat up or what? what is when it absorbs well, the... It, it would it does heat up i suppose okay but, but it's not, not they're not hot yeah. no, we're, we're only talking about a few microwatts yeah, okay we, you know okay I mean, so you kind of answered my question so when you are putting uh, boards on top of each other mm -hmm. maybe you don't want to always use the kind of zero ohm direct connection between these boards correct not not usually for high frequencies no and uh, what about what about the uh, distribution of the holes or uh, or uh, what about this like connect only one uh, mounting hole to ground and all these other <laughs> iso that's what some people told me <laughs> oh i know I, I've, I've been there I've, I've done that um so you can design your prototypes with a range of PCB to chassis bonding options with uh, zero ohm links for direct bonds at DC and capacitors for radio frequency bonds. And you can use resistors, as we just talked about, to dampen RF resonances. Now, we always, always, always need multi point RF bonding. Okay. Single, all that single point bonding does, and it's the same as splitting planes, all it does is create a resonance structure. Now, 30 years ago, the resonances were higher than we cared about, you know, but not these days. These days, even a, a cheap microprocessor produces noise at, at, at many gigahertz. And, and so and, uh, resonance structures at many gigahertz, so it can be as small as this. You know I mean? So all of our physical structures on the boards are now resonating. This is the thing. This is why old guidelines are, are bad because they, they don't, keep up to date with the frequencies that are being emitted, whether we want them or not, from the chips that we use.
Uh, shall we go on the next slide so we can show how these uh, mounting holes can be connected? Instead of having a direct screw fixing to the chassis <clears throat> or the uh, shield, then we, we, we have a hole there for a, a screw fixing, but we don't connect it to the plane. That, that's the green thing on the board. I'm showing the, the uh, anti-pad here as if it's bigger than the pad, but of course it's not. This is just a device I use in my PowerPoint slides to show it's not connected. Yeah, yeah. And the a surface mount capacitor there. Or a resistor. Or a resistor. Yeah. So if you put this all over your know, screw fixing points, you can experiment with how to do the bonding. So for instance, in automotive um, products, a lot of automotive manufacturers don't like you to connect your reference plane on your printed circuit board to the actual metal chassis of the vehicle. Um, because you might get, if there's a fault in the vehicle, you might get battery currents flowing through your printed circuit board, uh, which would cause it to catch fire, I think so, or explode. So they don't want that to happen. And so you- So basically like your, your ground uh, for, or the ground for your board will come through the wires only? Yeah, through here through the wires mm -hmm. and that's connected to the the, the uh, reference plane in the board and this is connected to the, the metal chassis that the board's mounted on now you don't have to use a screw fixing we don't want to have I mean if you're doing Land Rover 10 RF bonding to your PCB and your chassis you don't um, you don't want to have a screw fixing every 100 millimeters you know um, you can use these they're nice low cost and so you don't have to have a screw a screw pillar, mm -hmm. you can have these things. Anyway, but if you have pads like these, you can have a, a, a spring finger soldered onto here, or or, you can, or onto here, or you could have one of those um, rubber, reflow solderable rubber gaskets onto here, and it presses against the chassis, presses against the metalwork, and this one makes a direct connection to the 0 volt plane, to the reference plane. And this one doesn't. We can put a component in here. And of course, you have to put in in the case of a screw thread. I should have said, if they've got a screw fixing there, you have to put this component far enough away that when somebody's screwing this in, it doesn't smash <laughs> smash into the yeah, component. Yeah. You would. Okay. Uh... And, and I can show you this here. Okay. This is the other side of that wide format printer driver. Mm -hmm. On. On the top side is the row of rubber gaskets. Mm -hmm. On the bottom side are these spring fingers. And none of the traces on this side go across go, go across the other side without going through a filter. Mm -hmm. Which is very important. Because any trace, any conductor that passes through from one side to the other has to be filtered or has to be connected to the to the via wall has to be filtered before it goes out or uh, immediately after it goes out or? Well, ideally you do it exactly in the line here. Mm -hmm. But uh, it may not but be. The, you just do it as close as you can. On on yes. either side? Yeah, it doesn't really matter okay. whether these filters are on this side or on that side. Ideally it goes in, in the wall. And that's my, um, my image of the uh, uh, how to do PCB shielding, which is one you chose, um, goes into that in some detail. Okay. Uh, shall we then speak about this shielding? Or because I made a note, I would like to talk also about this uh, guard around the edge mm. of the PCB. 